Hi there, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. Today I'm gonna to share one of my favorite World Watercolor Month prompts that I have done this month so far, and this was for the prompt envelope. And I just love the way it came out and it was really fun to do. I started off by sketching in my sketchbook that I'm using for World Watercolor Month, which is a journal made by Artsy Rosie on Etsy, and I will link up to her shop in the video description in case you're curious and thinking about buying a handmade sketchbook. It's made with Arches paper and it is divine. And I've been keeping every one of my sketches here. Now look at that. I brushed some eraser crumbs off my paper and I got a smidge of phthalo blue, phthalo blue friends on the, like the most staining color in the world on my sketchbook. So I quickly grabbed a brush with water and I scrubbed it out and I blotted it off and dried it and then continued on with my sketch. You don't never want to dry, uh, draw over wet paper because it will damage it. So just dry paper doesn't get damaged as easily as wet paper. So carrying on, I found a reference photo on Unsplash of some carnations draped across an envelope, like the back side of an envelope. So I love that as a starting point. And then, uh, but instead I drew the front side of an envelope. I made a little flap and then drew the, um, like a wax seal on there with a heart. I thought that would be really sweet and romantic. And I wanted kind of a romantic vibe on this. I found a feather in my stash and I sketched that over the other side of the envelope to kind of just kind of, I was thinking like a, a quill that you would dip in ink and um so basically i started off with a reference photo but then kind of finished off with my own my own stuff that i had for reference in my imagination so this inkwell is from imagination i took a scrapbooking template to get my rectangle and then another scrapbooking template to get an oval on the inside and then i had to redraw my edge because i'm like my goodness i cannot make this thing <laughs> I cannot make this thing symmetrical for my life if my life depended on it. And then I used a compass to draw a little circle in the center for the, the opening of my inkwell. And then I'm just freehanding some kind of faceted shapes on the side to make it look like it's kind of sparkly and like a cut glass type inkwell. There's some things I truly love in this world. Objects, I mean, I guess it's not love. It's things I really like. J'adore! <laughs> Which would be the, when you love an inanimate object. So it's not the same as like romantic love in French. I'm studying French, by the way, because um, we're going to France next year. But anyway, um... I don't know how to say inkwell in French, but if I did, j'adore inkwell. Uh, yeah, so I made my little inkwell there and I painted the background in, but I turned the camera off when I thought I was turning it on. And in, instead of beautiful background footage, I have footage of me sorting markers because I was doing that while I was <laughs> waiting for something to dry. Oh, it's been one of those weeks, my friends, but I know we all have them, don't we? Uh, so basically for the background, I did a mixture of Caput Morchuum, which is one of the new colors from the Sennelier Le Petit Aquarelle watercolor line. Um, I used ultramarine blue and the Caput Morchuum for the shadow. I used a yellow ochre and a little bit of carmine for my brighter background. Basically, I wanted a pinky, a pinky neutral in my background. And then for the, the envelope, I did mostly yellow ochre, a light wash of yellow ochre, and then I did some Caput Morchuum, um, some yellow ochre, some carmine, and some ultramarine blue. Basically made a brown with those primaries and used those for my shadows, but I left them a little bit more yellow leaning since it was on the kind of ivory colored envelope. Now I'm using carmine uh, on my dagger brush, and the brushes I'm using are from my set from Craft Ammo. I don't know if there's any sets available. It was getting pretty low in stock, but if there are, I'll link them up anyway. Uh, but of course, you can use whatever dagger you have. Uh, it's about three eighths to a half inch in size, uh, like you'll need a number eight round. You know, use what you have, but if you do need some brushes, I'll link to that and you can check them out. Uh, there's a lot of good brushes out there, friends. Um, and if you already have ones you like, then use them because watercolor brushes will last you so long if you take care of them. And the brushes in my set are pretty big and I made them that way because I know the smaller brushes are so easy, easy to find inexpensively. I want to have a good quality larger brush set, set that wouldn't be crazy expensive. So anyway, it's definitely uh, a larger brush set if that's something that interests you, if they're still available. My gosh, what a video. I don't know if the products are still available, uh, but I wanted to do this painting with these paints because um, I highly rated the Le Petit Aquarelle watercolors about six and a half years ago when they first came out. I thought they were a wonderful option for a student grade set, and but recently I've had some people tell me they didn't think those paints were very good anymore. So I saw they released a 36 set. Um, I'd seen them pop up on Amazon twice, so I, I decided to grab one last time I saw them come up, this was a few days ago, and um, give them a try because I really like them. And if um, if they're not good anymore, then I want to amend my old review. Uh, so I got the 36 set knowing that was the newest offering. And I got to say, I'm still liking them. They performed really well for me. I like the new edition of colors. There are a few colors that are quite similar that are probably not really essential, but um, I think it's a nice set still. Um, I swatched them out. Uh, I'll have a re full comparison with the new paints and the old paints coming up on my YouTube channel if it's not up already. I don't know in what event I'm going to release them, but um, 
I've since done some more work with these, and yeah, they're they're definitely as uh, as good as the older versions, in my opinion. So um, I will I'll either that's on my channel now or it will be. So here I am filling the oval with a I think this is um is this crimson I'm not sure what the color red here I'm using is but it's one of the newer bright ones and I'm filling the oval and then I will put little sparkles with the red in the facets to show just kind of reflected color I'm also using that uh, crimson for my shadow or I think it's a crimson it's um or maybe it's a scarlet I'm not sure it's a very more it's a more intense natural true red kind of like a naphthol crimson to be honest I'm throwing that in the shadows of the carnation as well as mixing it with some ultramarine blue and some carmine for the wax seal and also the, the drippy wax area there. Uh, so basically I'm recycling the same colors, I am mixing, I am just trying to use, if I use a color somewhere I'm trying to use it somewhere else as well just so I get a nice cross pollination of colors. The exception of that would be the greens that I was using. Gorgeous greens in this set, I've got to say. In fact, it was the original Le Petit Aquarelle where I fell in love with the olive green from Sennelier and it became probably my favorite earthy green. Um, it's a gorgeous kind of sap green color. It's just really nice. It's kind of like Winsor Newton's olive green, to be honest. I do find the Le Petit Aquarelle reminds me of the Winsor Newton Professional range. If you like that and you're looking for maybe a set for travel or you're trying to get maybe a friend started off a little bit less expensively in watercolors, it's a definitely a good option. Um, I would have no qualms painting with these paints. Um, and I like the I like the Sennelier Pro Grade. I do have a comparison on the Sennelier Pro Grade and the, the Le Petit Aquarelle on my channel as well, if you're curious about that. I think that's in the original review of the Le Petit Aquarelle, but yeah, I think they're a really great student grade, student grade option. They're, um, they're just, they're just nice. I, I think anyway, you can let me know what you think in the comments below. If you've used them and you do not share my opinion, please let me know. Um, I think they're probably like a step above Cotman. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I think that they don't layer quite as well as the professional range. I feel like they're maybe a little thicker, like they, they kind of layer up a little thicker and they get a little shiny if you layer too much, whereas the um, professional range does not get that shine to it if you layer it up. Uh, so maybe it's got some extra, um, or maybe what they're using for the binder is a little different. It's got a, It's just got a little bit of a gloss to it that if you layer it up that you don't get with a professional range. I would say that's the only downside, honestly, because they mix beautifully. They're wonderfully transparent and gorgeous. And um, yeah, I think they're a great student option and th they're very affordable. So what's not to love, right? I want to try their tubes. I haven't tried their tubes yet, so I can't speak on them, but the pans are wonderful in my opinion. So I'm mixing in a little bit of ultramarine blue and um, did I use any, I think I did use like a phthalo violet in there. I'm not sure what they're calling that color, but um, oh, when I opened up my, my case of colors, so they were all, you know, <laughs> higgledy jiggledy all over the place they were out of their pans and there was no wrappers on them so I didn't know what was what so you know yeah I, I have to say I'm not 100% confident in the names of any of the colors just because like the phthalo blue and the phthalo turquoise I can't really tell which is which um so I'll just kind of go by common names that you probably have in any palette just in case you're following along with other stuff um it's really important you dry your paper if you're going to go over it with gel pen or you're going to use any colored pencils or anything on top because that's when you damage your paper when it's wet and that's when you damage your pen when it's wet and also if you don't want feathered edges and you don't want your paint to bleed and you're going to go in and put these occlusional shadows and these kind of tighter shadows you want to make sure the background's dry otherwise those cast shadows are going to bleed into your other paint um so when in doubt dry it out Hey, can you remember that? When in doubt, dry it out. I also say when in doubt, throw it out. <laughs> when in doubt, work it out. When in doubt, you know, I don't know. Uh, I guess I'm not a let things be type of person. <laughs> And yeah, just throwing in some shadows. Um, I love still life shadows because they can be a little bit um, scattered because you often have more than one light source. And yeah, just try to be generally agree agreeable with your shadows. Like if you're putting a shadow on the same direction from one object, just try to make it agree with the other objects and you're usually good. You know, if you have if you do have one of those shadow situations where you're seeing it in two, from two directions, like you have two light sources, just make sure they agree and you should be good. And apparently I meant to turn the camera off here. So excuse my arm as we work through this. Now I'm adding, uh, see, is this gel pen or color pencil? Gel pen. I'm adding gel pen for my brightest white sparkles. And I just want to get that white on there and see what else it needs. See if it needs any color pencil. I actually think it looks pretty good here with just the um, the white highlights with the gel pen. I really don't think I needed to do more, but I did decide to go and grab some colored pencil and add that into the mix. 
I like how the green uh, kind of added a little bit of fullness and volume to the carnations, but I wasn't crazy about the feather. I think part of it was that I had built up too much paint on the feather. I kind of hit that point where it gets a little glossy and then it's hard for a colored pencil to stick on top of it. Like I was telling you earlier, the, the drawback to these paints versus the professional range is just you're limited on the amount of glazing and layers you can do, but with the professional range, you can layer for days without it getting muddy. Uh, so I think that would probably be the, the negative, but other than that, I really liked it. I took a cool gray and added an occlusional shadow, that shadow touching the elements that are flat, and that pretty much does it. I hope you enjoyed this World Watercolor Month demo, and I hope you are doing the channel the uh, challenge as well, and if you are, good luck, and we will see you next time. Happy crafting.